Hello, Math Buddies! Today, we're going to learn how to graph a polynomial function. I am Jordans, and welcome to Math TV. Our target for today, draw the graph of a polynomial function of degrees greater than 2. Look at the graphs. What did you observe? The first graph is a linear function. A linear function is a polynomial function with a degree of 1. The graph of a linear function is a straight slanting line. The second graph is a quadratic function. A quadratic function is a polynomial function with a degree of 2. A quadratic function has a parabola as its graph. How about this one? Or this one? They are polynomial function of a degree higher than 2. How can we sketch their graph? There are steps to follow in graphing polynomial functions. Number 1. Write the function in factored form. Find the zeros and its multiplicity using synthetic division. Number 2. Find for the y-intercept by equating the value of x to 0. The y-intercept of a polynomial function is the intersection of its graph and the y-axis. For number 3, Find the end behavior of the graph of a given polynomial function with the use of the leading coefficient test. It is very important that we know how the graphs behave. And for number 4, plot the points and draw a smooth continuous curve to connect the points. Okay, the end behavior of the graph has four cases. For cases number 1 and 2, it's odd-powered polynomial function. For case number 1, the leading coefficient is positive. We called it POP, stands for positive odd power. The graph falls to the left and rises to the right. Case number 2, the leading coefficient is negative. Again, it has an odd power. Let's call it as NOP, negative odd power. The graph rises to the left and falls to the right. For cases number 3 and 4, they are both even-powered polynomial function. Case number 3, the leading coefficient is positive. Let us call it PEP, positive even power. The graph rises to the left and to the right. And for case number 4, the leading coefficient is negative. Again, it is an even power. We'll call it NEP, means negative even power. The graph falls to the left and to the right. Next, we have the multiplicity. Multiplicity refers to the number of times that its associated factor appears in the polynomial. So, take note of this. If the multiplicity is even, it will touch the x-axis. And if it's an odd, it will cross the x-axis. Okay, let's have an example. Example number one. Graph the polynomial function p of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x. Solution, step number 1, write the function in factored form. We have p of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x. Let's write x outside the groove. Then, x squared minus 2x minus 3 will remain. We can now factor it as x minus 3 and x plus 1. We have now p of x is equal to x multiplied by x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 1. Finding zeros and multiplicity equated to 0. So we have x is equal to 0, our first 0. Then we have x minus 3 is equal to 0. x now is equal to 3. Next, x plus 1 is equal to 0. x now is equal to negative 1. Hence, our zeros are 0, negative 1, and 3. Now, the polynomial in factored form is p of x is equal to x multiplied by quantity x minus 3 multiplied by quantity x plus 1. We get this to know their multiplicity. As you can see, the factors don't have a degree more than 1. So, their multiplicity is equal to 1. Therefore, it will cross the x-axis. Step number 2, finding the y-intercept. So, let us equate x to 0. We have p of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x. Substituting the value which is 0, we have 0 raised to 3 minus 2 multiplied by 0 raised to 2 minus 3 multiplied by 0. It is now equal to 0. 
That's our y-intercept. For step number 3, finding the end behavior of the graph using the leading coefficient test, we have p of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x. Look at the leading coefficient. We have positive. And for the degree, we have odd. It's 3. It's pop, positive add power. So the graph falls to the left and rises to the right. We go to the last step, step number 4. Plot the points and draw a continuous curve to connect the points. Let us write the zeros. We have 0, 3, and negative 1. How about the value of y-intercept that is equal to 0? So, let us now plot the points. We have here 0, positive 3, and negative 1. That's for x-intercept. And 0 for the y-intercept. As you can see, we already have point in 0, so that's okay. After that, let us now connect the points with a continuous curve. Take note that our graph falls to the left and rises to the right. Example number 2. Sketch the graph of the polynomial function p of x is equal to x to the 4th power plus x cubed minus 7x squared minus x plus 6. Solution for step number 1. Write the function in factored form. Let us use synthetic division. Make sure that the polynomial function is arranged in decreasing power of x and no missing term. So, let us write all the coefficients. We have positive 1, positive 1, negative 7, negative 1, and positive 6. For our synthetic divisor, we're going to use the rational zero theorem in the form of p over q, where p is the value of the constant term and q is the value of the leading coefficient. So, we have here 6 over 1. Now, let us list all the factors of 6 and 1. We have Positive negative 1, positive negative 6, positive negative 2, positive negative 3, and positive negative 1. Simplifying that, we have P over Q is equal to positive negative 1, positive negative 6, positive negative 2, and positive negative 3. We're going to use it as our synthetic divisor. Let us use positive 1 as our synthetic divisor. So we bring down the first term, which is 1. Then 1 times 1 is equal to 1. We write it below the second term. Then add. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Then 2 times 1 is equal to 2. We write it below the third term. Then add. Negative 7 plus 2 is equal to negative 5. Negative 5 times 1 is equal to negative 5. We write it below the fourth term. Then add. Negative 1 plus negative 5 is equal to negative 6. Negative 6 times 1 is equal to negative 6. We write it below the last term, then add 6 plus negative 6 is equal to 0. So check! 1 is one of the zeros of the given polynomial function. Now, let us write the depressed equation. The pressed equation is an equation with a degree less than our p of x. After that, repeat the process by synthetic division. Let's write again the coefficients. So we have 1, 2, negative 5, and negative 6. To get the synthetic divisor, we must list down again all the possible rational zeros. So we have p over q is equal to 6 over 1. Listing all the factors, we have positive negative 1, positive negative 6, positive negative 2, and positive negative 3. Let us choose positive 2 as our synthetic divisor. We bring down 1, then we multiply it to 2. We have 2, write it below the second term, then add 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. 4 times 2 is 8, we write it below the third term, then add negative 5 plus 8 is equal to 3. 3 times 2 is 6. We write it below the last term. Then, add negative 6 plus 6. It is equal to 0. So, check. 2 is one of the zeros of the given polynomial function. Note that if you don't get 0 as the remainder in your first attempt, you can always choose and try another one until you come up with 0. Let us write the depressed equation. That's x squared plus 4x plus 3. Now, we can factor this out. We have x plus 1 times x plus 3. Equating it to 0, we have x plus 1 is equal to 0. Solving for x, it is equal to negative 1. And the last one, 
x plus 3 is equal to 0, x now is equal to negative 3. Hence, the zeros are 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 3. For step number 2, finding the y-intercept by equating the value of x to 0. So, we have 0 raised to 4 plus 0 cubed minus 7 multiplied by 0 squared minus 0 plus 6. It is now equal to positive 6. Next, for step number 3, finding the end behavior of the graph, our leading coefficient is positive because we have positive 1. Then, the degree is even because we have 4 as the power. It is pep positive even power. So the graph rises to the left and to the right. Step number four is plotting all the points and drawing a continuous curve to connect the points. The given function is p of x is equal to x to the fourth power plus x cubed minus 7x squared minus x plus 6. The zeros are 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 3. And the y-intercept is equal to 6. Let us now plot the point. So we have 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 3. That's our x-intercept. And for our y-intercept, we have positive 6. The graph rises to the left and to the right. I hope you enjoy our discussion for today. See you again for our next lesson. Thank you. Have a nice day. And God bless everyone.